This is your host Salim Akhtar Malik on the Salim Sports channel. On this channel I discuss with you issues related to national and international affairs, military history, military science and technology and social science. My vlogs will be helpful for students of these disciplines. I have noticed that many vloggers in Pakistan's neighborhood distort the facts and spread half truths about Pakistan. The thrust of my vlogs will therefore be to pinpoint and expose these half truths and distortions and present the reality to my viewers. I request you to subscribe to my channel and support me in rebutting the false narratives about Pakistan. My counter narratives will also help the Indian viewers, particularly the students of national and international affairs, military history and competitive exams to counter check my narratives with what is being fed to them by the Indian think tanks and vloggers and find for themselves what is the truth about Pakistan. In the first of a series of my vlogs, I'll discuss the Kashmir dispute between Pakistan and India. The transcript or write-up to my vlogs is available free of cost on my email address, which is salimakhtar53 at yahoo.co.uk. So you will get the transcript along with references which will be uh, inserted in the transcript at this address and this will be free of cost. The topic of this vlog is Pakistan's instability tempts Indians to drool over Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. This is a map of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir as it is today. Today it is divided between Pakistan, India and the People's Republic of China. Now the sliver of territory shown in dark red to the extreme left is Azad Jammu and Kashmir administered by Pakistan. Above it is Gilgit Baltistan, which is a province of Pakistan. It is shown in red. Below Gil Gilgit Baltistan and towards the right of Azad Jammu and Kashmir is the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, which includes the Kashmir Valley, Jammu region and the Indian occupied Ladakh. Aksai Chen is shown in yellow to the east of Jammu and Kashmir that is Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Then there is the Shaksgam Valley shown on the map which is under Chinese control and Siachen Glacier which is a wedge shown in dark yellow. I'll talk about Shaksgam Valley and Siachen Glacier in detail in my subsequent vlogs but make a passing reference to them in this vlog also. Since the brokered regime change in April 2022, Pakistan is in the throes of an organized chaos where every state and national institution is at loggerheads with the other institutions. The politicians, civil and military bureaucrats, judges and media are at each other's throats. In this tumult, India, Pakistan's sworn enemy, is in watchful waiting. It reminds us of a situation where vultures gather and wait to feast on a dead body. So in their fantasies, many Indians ironically behave like vultures. As for their fantasy about the end of Pakistan, 
it will remain a pipe dream. Indian bloggers and vloggers are presently engaged in discussions often bordering on hysteria how India can grab Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan from Pakistan and even reintegrate the whole of Pakistan into India. In this scramble to gobble of Pakistan, in, rather in the, their scramble to gobble of Pakistan, at least in their dreams, and undo the 1947, what they call baby section of Mother India, one is reminded of a letter written by Jawaharlal Nehru, independent India's first Prime Minister. The letter was written to Brigadier Kariyappa, who was then a member of the Reconstitution Committee formed by the British to oversee the division of the British India's armed forces between the dominions of India and Pakistan. Now, Brigadier Kariyappa later on became independent India's first native chief of the army staff. In his letter to Kariyappa, Nehru wrote, Let things shape for a while, but of one thing I am convinced, that ultimately there will be a united and strong India. We will have to go through the valley of shadows before we reach the sunlit mountain top. The same Jawaharlal Nehru had once remarked to Braj Kumar Nehru, his cousin, and India's ambassador to the United States from 1961 to 1968. He said, let us see how long Pakistan lasts. Can India capture Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan in a kinetic war? The first Kashmir war left Pakistan holding not only the mountain barrier of Azad Jammu and Kashmir, separating the Kashmir Valley from the plains of West Punjab, but also in possession of Gilgit Baltistan, a giant plug that prevents India from expanding into Afghanistan and further towards Central Asia. In the 21st century, huge iron, copper, lithium and natural gas reserves have been discovered in Afghanistan. Not to mention the enormous gas reserves in Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan. India can have access to these deposits but for this giant plug of Gilgit Baltistan, you can see it clearly on the map. This giant plug of Gilgit Baltistan is controlled by Pakistan. Now, coming to Shaksgaon Valley, the Karakoram tract, including the Shaksgaon Valley, was never under the control of Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir. His claims on Shahsgam, Aksai Chin and Tibbet were based on map demarcations by British surveyors. China never accepted those claims. And Pakistan since 1947 has also never accepted Indian claims on Jammu and Kashmir. In the 1963 Sino-Pakistan Agreement, Pakistan recognized Chinese sovereignty over the Shahsgam tract while China recognized Pakistan's sovereignty over the Gilgit Agency and a border based on actual ground positions was recognized as the international border by China and Pakistan. So much for the false claims by India. Siachen Glacier The conflict was started in 1984 by India's capture of the Siachen. The conflict in Siachen stems from the incompletely demarcated territory on the map beyond the map coordinate known as NJ 9842. The 1949 Karachi Agreement and 1972 Sigra Simla Agreement did not clearly mention who controlled the glacier, merely stated that the ceasefire line and 
After 1971, the line of control between India and Pakistan and the Jammu and Kashmir region terminated at NJ9842. Presently, India is in occupation of the Siachen Glacier, but for the last many decades, a war is going on where Siachen is known as the world's highest battleground. In, in this war, both Pakistan and India are bleeding. India is bleeding more. Now we come back to India's aspirations to occupy Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. Operation Trident was conceived in 1987 by the then Indian Chief of the Army Staff, General Krishna Swami Sundarji. He envisaged an offensive to capture Gilgit Baltistan with three divisions, including a division each down the Nubra and western Shiok valleys, with the third division in reserve. This never happened because India backed down. Ravi Rikhe, an Indian defense analyst, suggests an Indian army offensive with two cores to capture Gilgit and Skardu, a core each attacking Gilgit from Gures and attacking Skardu from Kargil. The approaches for launching the Indian offensive have not been mentioned, but we understand that the attacking troops will advance along the river valleys. These are the river valleys which show the Shiok, Nubra, Western Shiok and Indus river valleys. But these valleys are very narrow and they cannot take large formations for launching an offensive operation. Mostly these are based on mule tracks. And you cannot launch mule track uh, correction. You cannot launch a large scale operation along mule tracks. At the most, an offensive action can be launched with a brigade plus group, and that too in echelons. So, capturing Gilgit and Baltistan with the sheer force of numbers is not possible. An airborne operation, is it possible? Brigadier Hussain, a Pakistani defense analyst, he wrote in 2006 that an operation is possible, uh, an operation can be launched by India, India where the Indian Army captures Skardu airfield in a surprise attack by airborne troops and follows it up by a massive airlift of troops to rapidly build up a force of the size of a reinforced infantry division. This appears more applicable or practicable. The, the same holds true for an operation to capture Gilgit. Attacking Azad Jammu and Kashmir will be relatively easier, but the attacking army will be soon embroiled in a slogging match, as happened even during 1947 to 49 First Kashmir War, 1965 War, 1971 War, and the Gilgit Correction, the Kargil Operation. In all these wars, Pakistani volunteers, when they had liberated Azad Jammu and Kashmir, could not be dislaunched by India. This happened, as I said, in during the 65 war, the 71 war, and the Kargil operation. Even if Indian Army employs an air assault division each to capture Gilgit and Skardu, the technique and tactics will be the same. Pathfinders will try to secure the airfield, followed by the leading brigade and the remaining division. 
but it will not be a walkover. The actual battle will start when attackers' boots are on the ground. While the landing of troops is in progress, the defender will retaliate by engaging the enemy. That is, the enemy aircraft, airfields, landing grounds and heliports with air, air defense artillery, field artillery and surface-to-surface -surface missiles. What, what is India's past record? In October 1947, India initially landed one Sikh battalion at Srinagar airport. The leading elements of this battalion were under explicit orders to turn back if the airfield was held by the raiders. But the air raiders were not there. They were some distance away from Srinagar, squabbling over who would lead the victory march into Srinagar. So, one Sikh battalion easily landed at Srinagar airport because there was no enemy. India attacked and absorbed small states like Hyderabad, Junagar, Goa and Sikkim etc. Because militarily they, they were no match for India. In 1962, Nehru tried to test the waters by provoking China through his forward policy. After India's defeat, China declared a unilateral and well thought out ceasefire, restricting India from ever approaching within 20 kilometers of the line of actual control in Ladakh. And while China keeps nibbling at Indian held territory, to this day, India obliges China meekly. In 1971, India attacked East Pakistan only when it was absolutely sure of its victory. But the Indian army stopped in its tracks in the Western theater because of the human and material risks involved. In the future, Pakistan will resort to armed intervention in Pakistan only when it is absolutely sure that its offensive will be a walkover. Covert Indian intervention in Pakistan should be viewed in this context. So let us have a comparison between the Indian offensive formations, that is the formations which both the countries will use or employ in a future war. In South Asia. So mind you, if India ever tries to invade Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, there will be an overall war between India and Pakistan across the international border as it happened during the 1965 war and the 1971 war. The war will not be restricted to Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. So, in this war, besides limited employment of tanks in the Ladakh region, particularly uh, specifically in the Depsang Plain, India will employ its armor against Pakistan in the plains of Punjab and Sindh. So, India's three armored divisions and these are the one 31 and 33 armored division 33 armored division was initially raised as a mechanized division but was later on converted into an armored division pakistan has two armored divisions which are two uh, which are one and six so there is no mechanized division with india presently Whereas Pakistan has two mechanized divisions. These are 25 and 26. I should tell you that you should take these statistics with a pinch of salt because I have got them from the internet. And there is a likelihood that there is some deviation from what I am presenting to you. But by and by, by and large, these are, this is the situation. Rep reorganized army 
planes infantry divisions there are eight i will cite four of them these are 14 18 24 and 36 and there are eight others and pakistan does not have any such toy independent armored brigade india has six whereas pakistan has eight independent mechanized brigade india has two pakistan has seven para forces there is a parachute brigade 50 para brigade with india Pakistan has an SSG division. There were two brigades initially and the third brigade was under raising. Most likely it has been converted into, uh, it has been, the, the raising has been completed. So this is the comparison between India and Pakistan as regards the offensive formations. Comparison of combat power. Except for the active army reserves, India nowhere enjoys a 3 to 1 superiority. Its superiority in critical forces is thus enough for forcing a military decision on Pakistan. Indian superiority in armored divisions and rapids has been matched by the combined combat power of Pakistan's two armored divisions and two mechanized divisions. Pakistan Army also has more independent armored and mechanized brigades self-propelled artillery, attack helicopters, and parachute forces. You also have to take into account Indian deployment against Pakistan and China. So, it will not be a walkover or Indians will not be able to slice Pakistan as they had been bragging in the past. We talk about Indian 50 Independent Parachute Brigade. In November 1988, Indian Army employed its 50 Independent Parachute Brigade to carry out an airborne oblique air transported operation in what was claimed to be an operation to liberate Maldives from a bunch of rebels apparently looking like petty thieves who had reportedly overthrown the government of this island nation. It was a put-up show, contrived to show the world and to the Indian people at large that the Indian Army was capable of launching such an operation. Despite the miserable looking tramps of rebels, the parachute brigade meticulously followed all the drills involved in an airborne operation. Spearheading the mission, 6 para regiment of the 50 para brigade flew in a fleet of transport aircraft. One team rescued the poor president of Maldives. Another took over the airfield and a third rescued Maldivian security personnel. There was a fo there was a role for the Indian Navy also. When the rebels tried to escape along with some hostages, they were chased by the Indian Navy. Does India have a military solution? We all know that for the last decade or so, the Indian Army is busy raising a mountain strike corps to liberate Sichen from China and Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgil Baltistan from Pakistan. However, Indian generals tacitly admit that the Indian Army is unable to fight a kinetic war or what they call a conventional war against Pakistan and China. So India will henceforth seek resolution of its territorial disputes mainly through political and psychological maneuvering, the Grey War. What is the Grey War? A, a webinar attended by a former Indian general and academicians was held on May 29, 2020, to ponder upon non-military strategic methods to occupy Azad, Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. There was nothing new in it as far as India's strategy of employing Trojan horses to achieve its military objectives was concerned.
Addressing the webinar, Lieutenant General Retired Atta Hasnan of the Indian Army said, the generational integration is going to take place in Gilgit Baltistan and India must ensure that Gilgit Baltistan should not integrate into Pakistani society. We also must explore the Shia connect, that is the Shia connection. We have a Shia connection with Turtuk, Kargil and 25 million Shias across India. What a bold person he is. We need to integrate the Shia identity from Lucknow to Kargil. Social media shall indeed be a form, be a part of it. Looking at the diaspora, they have a huge Gilgit Baltistan, Mirpuri and Pakistan occupied diaspora. We must look for exclusive meetings with these diasporas whenever our leaders visit foreign countries. This is not something new. They had been doing this for the last many decades, perhaps since 1947. The Shia lunar calendar for Gilgit Baltistan is determined by the Imam of the Friday Mosque at Kargil. And the Imam of the Kargil Mosque receives his instructions from Iran. This is not something symbolic. It implies that the Shias living across the line of control now have a single authority that regulates their secular as well as religious life. Addressing the same webinar, Dr. Manish, an Indian academician, said, Two major things that are important in our scenario. Firstly, India should invent most of the cyber techn technology, power, energize and uh, enlarge this domain. The content should be news, ideas, debate, social networking, entertainment, etc. Secondly, it should lend support to adversaries. We can do so by providing non-military and military aid to them, pro-democracy opposition movements and suddenly increasing that are too intense. Most of the literature and the research in the past century show that there have been well-laid, planned and massive efforts to raise pro-democracy movements. Such efforts tend to change the economy for a prolonged period. We should resort to such movements. So now come to unrest and illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir while they try to cause trouble in Pakistan. What is happening in their own backyard? Indian government in a presidential decree issued on 5th August 2019 revoked Articles 370 and 35A of India's constitution that guaranteed special rights to the Muslim majority state, including its rights to its own constitution and decision-making process for all matters except defense, foreign affairs and communications. So, despite these watered down and important articles of the Indian constitution, the Modi government revoked those articles on 5th August 2019. In the follow-up to the move, India sent thousands of additional troops to the region, imposing a curfew on parts of the besieged territory, shutting down telecommunications and arresting for political leadership. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister of Pakistan, addressing a joint session of the parliament on 6 August, expressed that India will now do ethnic cleansing of Kashmiris in order to change the demography of the Indian occupied Kashmir. After revoking the said articles of the Indian constitution, Modi trifurcated the Indian illegally Ill occupied Jammu and Kashmir state into three union territories of Kashmir Valley, Jammu region, and Ladakh. 
what are india's aims after trifurcating jammu and kashmir into three union territories india aims at changing the demography of uh, indian held kashmir that is the indian illegally held kashmir redrawing the constitutions constituencies in the health state to create an artificial hindu majority in the presently defunct puppet state legislative assembly restoring the pre august 5 2019 status of jammu and kashmir state holding fraudulent elections in the state to elect a hindu chief minister tabling a resolution the puppet state legislature to ask the indian parliament to abrogate the contentious article 370 which gave the held state a special status in the indian constitution this according to modi will close the kashmir dispute forever now we talk about the unrest and buddhist majority ladakh region now there are very few muslims and uh, even hindus in this region so this is a buddhist majority region what is happening there sonam wangchok is a ladakhi activist he was born on 1st september 1966 he is a ladakhi born indian engineer indian held kashmir's engineer innovator and educationist education reformist he is the founding director of the students ngo sekmol which was founded in 1988 by a group of students who had been in his own words the victims of an alien education system fostered on indian occupied ladakh he is also known for de- designing the sec mall campus that runs on solar energy and uses no fossil fuels for cooking lighting or heating he invented the ice stupa technique that creates artificial glaciers used for storing winter water in the form of conical shaped ice heaps on 26 january 2023 to highlight the effects of climate change on the fragile ecosystem of ladakh and to demand its protection under the sixth schedule of the indian constitution wangchu attempted to go on a fast at the khardungla plus however the authorities prevented him from going to khardungla by putting him under house arrest restricting his movement as well as restricting people from visiting him he was what was he doing he was just doing a harmless he was attempting at staging a harmless protest so they also detained a few of his students supporting him from the hyal campus which is uh, founded by him wangchuk continued to voice his protest and fast fasting from the hyal complex or hyal campus so what should pakistan army do pakistan army if it holds its defensive lines along the international border and the line of control in jammu and kashmir while maintaining strategic reserves comprising the nuclear deterrent the armored and the mechanized divisions need not launch an offensive against the indians let the kashmiris cause attrition to the indian occupation forces in the valley the indians will think many times before attacking pakistan it will be a long drawn out struggle and it will keep bloody uh, bleeding indians more than they can harm pakistan if ever india tries to occupy or to attack indian uh, from uh, indian held kashmir the territories of azad jammu and kashmir and gilgit baltistan that is all for now see you in the next video till then bye bye